So hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another DAX Friday, there's a new DAX function every Friday. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can improve your direct query report with a very simple trick. So let's get started. Okay guys, so I have in front of me a report. It is not a direct query, but I'll show you anyway what was happening. Um, this works only for a direct query. I have a few tables imported. I have orders, products, depots, and customers, okay? And I don't know if you've seen it before, but if you double click in the relationships, you have here something that's called assume in referential integrity. And if some conditions are met, these will be highlighted. It has to be direct query and two more that I'm going to explain in just a second. Now, because this is not a direct query, it's not highlighted, but in this case, it should be highlighted. You click on it, what happens? Well, what happens is that when you create a visual, for example, this visual, that is, gets the pot from the pots and quantity from orders, what happens in the background is that Power BI creates a join. And normally are left out to joins, and then they are sent back to the source. Well, if you click on referential integrity, instead of an outer join, you will do an inner join, and inner joins are more effective. So you will get better performance from your queries. All good, right? So you can just go and click referential integrity everywhere. Not quite, not quite. Let me show you. There are a few cases where referential integrity will get you in trouble. Here's the thing, let's start. from. Case number one, you have product ID, product ID, and as you can see, you have product ABC, product ABC, no problem. This will be highlighted if you have that query, click it, happy camper. Now, case two, I have here a case where I have uh, customer ID and customer ID. You see that I have customer A, B, and X, and here I have only customer A and B. So customer X exists only on the orders table. And if that happens, it's going to give you a problem. I'll show you. And let me show you the second one, which is the depot. You see here that I have on the order table an empty and then depot A and B, depot A and B. So these, you won't have the assume interest assume referential integrity highlighted because it doesn't have it. Uh, referential integrity. Well, that means basically that those two have to be identical. Identical. If they are not, that's when you run into trouble. Let me show you. Let's imagine that when you check this in, there were no empties in here. Okay, so you could click it and then you assume in, uh, referential integrity. New data comes, nulls come, and then suddenly you might think, oh, my query is going to break. It won't break, actually, which is a pity. So what is going to happen instead is like, if there are a quantity of 50 items, if you visualize the bottom quantity, what is going to show you is these. Blank is going to get ignored, it's going to show you 40. So if you don't know there are 50, it will show you 40. And the blank is not going to show. The same with customer, right? So the values for customer X will not show because there is no integrity in between them. Now, for the null, though, there is a way to actually prevent nulls from happening. And I showed you that on one of my quick tips videos. If you go to uh, the depot table, that's the one that had null, and then you click on depot ID, there is here, do you see the is nullable? You can turn that on, and if you turn that on, it means that it cannot have nulls. And we can do it, we cannot do that in orders because orders already have a null, but otherwise you could do it in the beginning. So I'll show you what it will do. Do you see what it says here? It's, it's basically telling you with a lot of words that you have nulls. And, you're not allowed to because it shouldn't be nullable. Now, if you set this when you don't have nulls and nulls come, this is the area you're going to get. So you won't be able to load the table until you have fixed the data, which is great because it's a way for you to, to know that, hey, I'm going to get into trouble because I've got nulls. So that is an easy fix. Now, how do you do 
with the customer case where you have customers in one table that they are not in the other one. Well, the only way to check that is to join the table. So maybe you have to join them in the source and make sure that when you join them, you don't miss, um, you know, doing joins in Power Query is so expensive in performance. So I wouldn't do it there. Maybe on the source, if there's a way for you to check that customer ID is always the same on both tables, then you can do that. If you are always sure that it will be the same, then it's no problem. Or if you can add on one of the tables if something is missing, also that could help. But as you can see, it's not as straightforward as you may think. So data quality for this performance tip is actually very, very important. But if your system is designed so no nodes and no ambiguity is designed, so then you can use it. So this is all for today anyhow. So I hope you enjoy your weekend. Here is actually midsummer, like the longest day of the year. So we are actually on holidays, but I prepared this for you before. So you don't miss any tax rightly. So I'm probably enjoying some vacation at this time that you're watching this anyhow. Enjoy your midsummer day, enjoy your weekend, and I, as always, I will see you again on Monday. So until then, take care and bye bye.